Hello guys, welcome to another exciting video. So recently, Ethereal Eyes by Makeup by Mario, which supposedly had to be limited edition, it was brought back online and is still available on Makeup by Mario's website. So I had some of the questions like, should I purchase this one? Or is that, should I purchase the Natasha Denona new palette? Well, let's talk about it. Some of the things will be personal preference, of course, but first thing I wanna point it out that this is limited edition. Will this go into his permanent line? I'm not sure. This was labeled as a limited, but one thing that caught my eye was that this is 12 months shelf life durability of a eyeshadow palette. And November, I think, 10th or something like that was that I received my package. It's going to be almost a year since this palette has been used. So for everyone that missed the opportunity and now has a chance to try it or for everyone else that bought this palette and used it, will have to repurchase another one. So this was like a perfect time frame for this palette. So is this just a, I don't know, marketing way of selling stuff? It could be. Still confused why this is not in the permanent line because this one, you guys, it is truly stunning. And spoiler alert, I do love this one. Anyways, this may be breaking point for you because Natasha's is in her permanent line, but also this one has 12, 24 months shelf life, yeah. So made in USA, made in Italy, $68, $69, 12 eyeshadow pan, 15 eyeshadow pan palette. That's the difference. We do have some similarities in these eyeshadows. They're not completely similar, neither with the undertones or with the finishes. And we'll talk about it and I will swatch uh, both of these palettes for you. The way they perform, it's a little bit different, but they are good quality. So Natasha's in general, the pigment grabs more with the Makeup Mario pigment grabs a little bit less, which I will show you, of course, um, throughout this video as well. Anyways, um, let's start with the swatches. So I will start with the lightest shade first. So I'm gonna grab EE1 and I will grab Fair Shade from the Natasha Denona. And these are like this is the difference. I'm sorry for the noise you guys if you hear anything. There are some constructions in the area so yeah. The lightest matte eyeshadow so this is going to be and so this is Makeup Mario. this is Natasha. You can see that the lightest shade from Natasha is really really I wouldn't say necessarily it's not warm tone but it's leaning more pink where this one leans more yellowish but it's not completely yellow and also as you can see in my pan i used that one i almost hit the pan um i do love this one for lighting up and anything i'm doing on my eyes so i definitely definitely when it comes to this i prefer mary's one and also this one you can rather use for a more like a transition especially if you're fair like you cannot lighten up your look with this now this is mary's ee3 shade and the most similarity that I could find, but it's pretty much not similar um, because this is much kind of a warmer transition shade than Natasha's VAG color. And similar to VAG is this shade right here, which is called Wit, which is complementary with the Makeup by Mario number no. 7, which this one is really, really nicely shade for even for a blush as well and then here we have makeup by mario number no. five and this right here is tender from the natasha's now we have makeup by mario number no. nine and it is this shade right here which i couldn't find anything comparable not even matte in makeup um in natasha denona's so I applied shade ella mainly because of the depth and now for the shade number four i didn't find anything in natasha's um palette because this one is leaning much more deeper kind of more um neutral warmer undertone and now these are from both from both palettes the deepest shade so this is number 12 from Mario and this is Natasha's silhouette shade. I would say I prefer performance of the Natasha's. I don't mind makeup by Mario's um, eyeshadow, but somehow I don't know why I did that. And I realized when I had when I was blending, I kind of uh, had some I don't know issues with it. And then lastly, we have makeup by Mario number eight, and here we have Natasha's 
filigree shade. Now I'm here having the rest of the Makeup by Marius eyeshadows and this one being shade number 11 compared to... I couldn't find anything with this undertone and I have to tell I really do love this shade but I couldn't find anything with this undertone so I applied shade Delilah and here with the toppers these are shades 2, 6 and 10 these are the toppers and the only like kind of what I could find was shade Muse and this one being shade Sheen but nothing with the yellow undertone so now we'll apply the rest of the Natasha's and so these are the shades Stone, Whisper, Traventine, Mesh and Mia also, I wanted to point out that the mesh shade is really, really similar to the Makeup by Mario shade number five and also um, with the shade that we already tried with this one from Natasha's. They're really kind of a similar shades. I think this was WAG. So these were the swatches and without any further ado, I want to show you how I created this makeup look and I will be back with you with some final thoughts. First thing that I'm going to do as I do that for the most of the part is that I need a lighter shade to blend in whenever I'm creating some look. Now in this case, there will be from Makeup and Mario EE1 shade and shade Fair from Natasha. Now the thing is that these two shades are fairly different and I do prefer Mario's shade way, way better. Let me show you. This one right here is Makeup by Mario. This is Natasha Denona. The Makeup by Mario has more yellow undertone, which I really, really love. And, and now when I swatch them, you can see how Natasha's lightest matte eyeshadow is much more cooler toned, but rosy pink, where this one is much more neutral. And that is the one that I prefer. And that is honestly something I wish we had in Natasha's palette. I'm going underneath my eyebrow with Makeup by Mario EE1. This is beautiful and this shade will go beautifully either if you are applying any brown uh, um, eyeshadows, um, whether they are cooler or warmer toned or more neutral, it will go beautifully. And that is something that we do have in this palette, you know, we have even cool tones and then we do have even a more of a neutral and warm tones as well. Since I went in a little bit, you know, too much. Just blend it. And then I'm gonna do the same right here just because of the technique that I'm doing so I can blend everything easier whenever now I go with my next shade. And this shade will go perfectly as well in my inner corner later when I apply it. Now I'm gonna take this shade from Natasha and I will apply that eyeshadow as well but you can see the difference look how this shade pulls more rosy so if you are having lighter skin tone than I am this wouldn't work as a light shade for you I think this can pull better on a deeper skin tones or if you're using this shade it doesn't have to necessarily be shade that it's going to lighten up areas of your eyes but it can rather be transition shade which I'm going to do now um, again, I really thought this one is going to be like a shade to lighten up everything and then we can blend everything in later. But my suggestion is if you are doing something lighter on your skin, use her shimmers or wet formula to lighten up. You want to be lighter. Unfortunately, this shade is not working for that. You know what? I'm just even going to blend this even more into my skin. So it's going to be easier later when I apply shimmer. The thing is, if this shade is too dark when I apply shimmer on top of it, it's just, it's not going to work. So now you can see the difference, Makeup by Mario and Natasha Denona. So we are basically gonna go step by step so you can see everything and all of the eyeshadows that I'm going to apply on my eyes so you can decide for yourself what is your personal preference. And again, I'll say this both eyeshadow palettes are so gorgeous and they are good quality but if you have to choose between one of them hopefully this video will help you to make a decision now i'm gonna go in with the shade ee3 this one right here which is beautiful transition shade and i will start right here as if i am doing my cut crease and this one will give you like that subtle um contour type of moment. Now I'm gonna go in with the shade 
seven i'll say Th uh, this is a shade that i used even as a blush it really performs nicely even as that the undertone is so beautiful so i'm going a little bit underneath the previous shade and i'm taking smaller brush just to you know be more much more precise and i'm gonna take blending brush i do have a little bit of a product on it and now i'm going to blend everything until i am left with almost no product at all now i'm gonna go back with the first shade and i'm going to use this as if i am cutting my crease just to make my eye a little bit more open and just to add the definition to my eye and you can see how this one it beautifully picks up um, it grabs beautifully onto your skin and it is really really pigmented and of course i'm going to use my blending brush to diffuse everything towards my center of my eye now on the other side with the natasha i'm going in with the shade stone and i'm going to do the same technique i think this one is a little bit more dark in opacity and i'm gonna take blending brush and blend that really well into the skin see this one as even though it looks kind of a light it is much more deeper and now we shall apply even more of that first shade right here so i will go with the shade fair again just on the edge so it's easier to blend everything it's going to lighten up everything usually it is not good to go with a lighter shade on top of the darker but what i do have right now is really 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 small amount of a product and i started first on my skin where my where my shade wasn't being applied the darker one and now i'm gonna blend everything in let's see what do we have and now the only shade that i can apply is this fair shade in my inner corner but again i do know it is going to look a little bit too rosy for my preference and too dark i wish this is a shade lighter but it doesn't look that bad now when it's combined with this one now this step was way easier to do off the camera and since we are focusing here on the eyeshadows i'm just gonna mention that i've done my liner with the Inglos MC gel eyeliner in number 77 and I did apply it also in my inner corner and my waterline but upper waterline and now I'm gonna go first with ethereal palette and I'm gonna be using the deepest shade from this palette which is this right here now just for the reference let me show you the difference between the deepest shade from the Mario and now the silhouette shade from Natasha's eyeshadow palette when you swatch them you can see that they are going pretty much deep in a depth range but this is the difference they're going to get so the Marius I would say it's leaning a little bit more warmer than the Natasha's and Natasha's is a little bit deeper in a depth shade and now we're going to see them side by side Hmm. and for now it's not covering my liner totally i can see the difference i should have even smudged my liner for doing this at least when it comes to this shade so this is how pigment looks like and now i'm gonna take the same brush and i will smudge this i'll definitely have to reapply this shade and i'm gonna take blending brush and just work around the edges I'm not trying to connect this with anything it's still too early to do that we are going to use our next shade for that now since i blended this shade it looks so much sheer i am going back with the same shade and also we'll go now around the edges as well i'll have to go again with this shade it goes pretty sheer at least the way i am applying it right now and so now for the one last time i will apply this shade right on the edge of my liner but the thing is here that since i applied black eyeliner i can see the difference now i'm gonna move on to a shade silhouette from natasha but this one in opacity can you see how 
This one grabs better. Now we are going to see what is going to happen once I blend it. But in opacity, this one definitely performs better when it comes to the pigment. Because it even covered my liner, meaning I can have beautiful transition without having that harsh line underneath from my liner. But some of you will prefer this. And the reason for that is because it is much more of a sheer opacity. Again, you guys, a lot of this will come down to your personal preference. Now with the blending brush, I'm trying to work around the edges as much as I can. Now I'm gonna take this shade from Ethereal, it is number four, and I will use this shade to connect previous with everything else that we are going to do later. And this one connects to the previous one really, really nicely. It's going to Give us a nice transition shade also. Going to grab some of the product on my blending brush like so. And use my blending brush to apply this. These shades are really soft from Mario, right? They are softer than Natasha's. Natasha's do grab pigment stronger than this one. So these are a little bit more subtle in a performance. Also, I'm going to apply this shade number 11 but I'm gonna use my finger for that because at the moment I can. You know what, I'm going to apply shade number eight a little bit. This is beautiful brown shade, but it does have a shimmer in it. And I'm going with the number 11, which is this beautiful kind of a greenish undertone. I'm gonna apply a little bit of fixing spray as well. Wow, this shade is so gorgeous. Can you see how this grabbed beautifully? This one can go really, really foiled. Um, it is really strong color. Now what I have to do is to incorporate this one within everything else that I have. Now also what I'm going to do is to apply this topper right here on the first third of this eyeshadow that I applied prior to this. And also what I wanted to do is to apply this. Oh, wait, I'm not sure which one do I want to apply. The yellow one or the oh no the first one so i'm going to apply this shade right here um this is again another topper we do have uh, three toppers in here and i'll say these ones are the most unique that i've tried so far like they are really unique and the way they're so they're different i haven't found this formula in anything else so far that I've tried. Now for the end, I'm going to use this shade right here, which is topper, and I will apply this one. Oh. Gorgeous. I'm telling you, these toppers, they are, they are something special, beautiful. I don't even know if the camera can do justice, how beautiful they are but i know i have them all over my face they do have quite a bit of a glitter in them so just be cautious when applying them like that now i will go and reapply my liner since it gets lost out of the old vial shadows next i'm gonna go with this shade tender from the natasha's palette and i will try to connect this shade to the previous one if I do have a harsh line here, it doesn't matter because we are going to go with the shimmers anyway. It, they do cover everything, every imperfections. You know, so just that I don't have to lose my time on that now. I'm going to use my blending brush just to spread this a little bit when it comes to the edges. And now I'm going to go with the shade Vogue. I'm going to take the excess off and just apply a little bit of that shade right here. It's going to connect beautifully this what we've done in the beginning and now everything else. And now we are going to fill in everything with the shimmers. But now I also feel like I could apply this shade Vogue a little bit here on the edges. Now I took shade Delilah on my brush. And I will spray that one a little bit and we'll apply that one, just kind of a connect. And I will fix this edge a little bit later. But now what I want to do after I apply the Lila shade, I want to go with this Muse shade, but this one is 
having the most specific texture out of these all because it is hard to pick it up with a brush unless you're using flat brush or a damped um, brush so that the pigment can grab it's like it has a flakes inside of it so unless i apply this with a finger i don't know how this would see how when you apply it on a finger how this looks stunning well i'll try no i definitely need a flat brush for this and these two delilah and muse they do combine really really well with each other and now with the inner corner i'm gonna go in with the shade mia which is kind of a wet topper formula it is her new formula and it truly does make your um skin look like a glass so that is one shade you want to be cautious about now one thing that i have to do is to connect here everything and i'm going to use a shade tender for this now for this area underneath my eyebrow i'm going in with the shade muse and also since i want that wet effect i'm gonna go in with this wet for formula sheen and also a little bit of mia i'm gonna do my eyeliner again because the eyeshadow went on top of it and i lost that opacity and the sharpness of the eyeliner i'm going to switch to a lower lash line and i think i will go with the same shade that i already have on my eyes the tiniest little brush and this is shade silhouette first i'm going to outline what am i going to do i am using brush like this because this part right here has to be really um sharp i can always clean this up and now i want to make this a little bit less harsh so i'm going back with a shade tender like i said i'm going to repeat mainly all of the shades I already used I'm going in with the shade Vag but since it is harder to get opacity with such a small brush I'm using this brush right here now I'm going to incorporate shade Delilah I think this might be my favorite shade from these shimmery ones and this is Muse shade and I will go with the Mia take another brush to combine this again I'm using pretty much all the shades that I've used here we're on the Makeup Ameria side I'm going in now with his darker shade basically gonna do the same and I'm going to go a little bit with this lighter shade and connect everything yes these are definitely definitely much more softer than natasha's eyeshadows i would say in a formulation that's the number one that divides one palette from the other i'm gonna grab a little bit of this shade right here yeah just a tiny bit just match everything and i'm gonna go with this shade Hopefully we'll grab onto into brush like this. And then I will repeat the toppers being this one right here. And connect that one to this. Okay, I will apply some lashes, finish off the rest of my face, and I will be right back with you with my final thoughts. Now these are my final thoughts. If you are more into brown shades, and if you are more like into more neutral everyday makeup look glam look then i would suggest for you to take makeup by Marius palette and also it does have one of these kind of uh, actually two mattes that are more on a rosy slash muted shade that are not not brown if you don't mind muted rose shades then grab natasha's because when it comes to browns you have do you have choice from her shimmers but you don't have that much choice with her matte a lot of these that look like a brown actually 
from the mats they are not when you apply them on the eyelid that being said they are both great for a glam makeup especially if you are working as a makeup artist i would actually say these two are both good even when it comes to that when it comes to pigment main difference is that natasha's grabs really uh, stronger than the marius are, are a little bit more they have like a more softer blend now it depends if you love that or not maybe for everyday quicker makeup look marius would suit you better and i said how many times i don't know like these toppers they are unique and they do perform even different than the new natasha's wet um formula they are much pigmented than for example mia that is new shade but the biggest punch in the shimmers i would say is this muse color it is you you have to pay attention how you grab this shade because it is truly unique honestly i wish i could combine some of the stuff both from this palette to create one palette they are different in formulation but again some of the stuff will be your personal preference when you watch the swatches and the performance to help you decide what you want at the end of the day i would recommend both of these palettes you're gonna get more use of the natasha since this one can last you two years and this one can last you only one year unless you're going to spend the whole palette you know like use it <laughs> within one year but um other than that the price point is pretty much the same i love the packaging uh, from the both of the palettes and that is basically all i had to share for today let me know in your comments what is your opinion when it comes to these palettes and how do you feel about the comeback of the ethereal eyes eyeshadow palette i I'm, i have to tell you both of them grabbed my attention when first they were advertising for these palettes they did grab my attention you know and i truly believe that these both of these palettes are gonna go towards like um larger audience since this is not a specific color story this is more of a color story that is suitable for a lot of consumers anyways you guys thank you for hanging out with me today um i will see you in my next but before that make sure to watch this video and i will see you in my next one thank you bye